Hi everyone, I'm Hub Hildenbrand. Thanks for tuning into my channel, Hub Hildenbrand Guitar Academia. Today we have a, um, a lesson we already talked about framework one and framework two. Now we, we, we make a sort of conclusion here and um, I will uh, lay out this concept of framework three here, which is a combination of one and two. And it's also the, the basis, the, the, the skeleton, the framework of Western harmony. So it's a very important thing uh, to, to know. So let's get right in into the endless ocean of music. Please follow the link down in the description below. There is a PDF file which accompanies this lesson. And I also have this uh, PDF here printed out in front of me. And we will just go through these two pages. So what is Tonal Framework 3? Tonal Framework 3 is a, like a combination of Tonal Framework 1 and 2. And sometimes I called it in previous lessons, I called it Framework A and Framework B. But now I want to stick to these numbers, actually. I think uh, it's more, yeah, I, I, I changed my mind. <laughs> okay, um, what is Framework 1? Framework 1 was the octave and divided by a perfect fifth. So we have a perfect fifth and then a perfect fourth, which uh, which is the octave. And this is the this is the most like resting um, framework, and it also uh, is very um, it's the first framework you you find in the overtone in the harmonic series. Then you have framework two. Framework two is the octave, and you have the fourth degree, the perfect fourth in between. And this framework, if you play that, it has a tendency to uh, that you actually hear the fourth degree as a kind of a tonal center. So it, in a way, it leads away from from the notes of the the outer um, octave, of the outer tones. So if we if we go from E, framework one is A B. Perfect fifth up, and then a perfect fourth up to E. It's like, and this really, really confirms the E as a root, as a tonal center. The, it's, the E is a real resting place, a home base here, where, where the B kind of gravitates to. Framework two, uh, framework two is a, uh, E, A, E, and suddenly we have a you have a different kind of a gravity feeling here. In a way, in a way, the A sounds now as a kind of a home base. So this this uh, in, the, in that framework two actually the the energy the tendency goes goes toward the A. That the A is a center of the whole um, gravitational uh, construction, so to speak. Now, now we go to framework three, and there's something interesting happens. Framework three is the combination of framework one and two. So we have three different notes. We have the A, uh, the E, sorry, the E. Then we have the perfect fifth and the octave, but we also have the perfect fourth in it. Okay? The interesting thing here is that when we look from E, we have all possible perfect intervals in it. Remember, we have four perfect intervals. We have the perfect unison, which is just E to E. Then we have the perfect octave, yeah, the second partial in the harmonic series. So E and E. And we have a perfect fifth from E to B. And also we have a perfect fifth down from E to A. So if we go from our higher E down perfect fifth, we go to A. And this is like uh, 
it's it's just an inversion actually that that we also can say we have a perfect fourth up from the low E to A and we also have a perfect fourth down from E in this case from the high E to B and actually it doesn't matter where where you play it if you the idea is just to bring that back into the octave so so the the outer tones are is, is the octave or are yeah, so you have a low E and an octave higher in E, so that's a kind of the range. Um, and in between you have these, you put the other notes. So you have, it's also this, the, the, this, um, the idea of scales, for example. You can play them everywhere and the relationships are all the same. But um, uh, normally you, you put them in an octave, you put them together to really uh, see what, what's happening there, like all these relationships and so on. Um, Okay, so that's that's actually we can also play that framework three. That's our framework three. And also the interesting thing here is, um, I mean, maybe if you have a, if you are a mathematician, it's like uh, uh, not so interested, interesting. But for me, it's interesting. Um, if you go up a perfect fifth fourth from E. And if you go down from the higher E, a perfect fourth to B, you have this interval of a major second in between A and B. So that's actually not a perfect interval. It's the only interval in this framework tree which, which results from, from all these, to put together all these perfect intervals, but it's a major interval in this case. But the interesting thing, no matter how you look at it, you can also say, okay, you go up a perfect fifth to B, and you go from the higher E down a perfect fifth to A. This interval also equals the distance from the eighth to the ninth partial. And it's like kind of two cents, two cents higher um, I mean, two cents larger, um, the, the um, bigger um, this interval than our uh, equal temperament uh, Western um, system, 12 tone system. Um, but it's like a, it's, it's interesting because it's, a, it's, a, it's also that, I mean, you, you see it also on, on the page, the first, the first uh, system, you see this, this notation and you see the, the, the cent uh, there. And a perfect fourth is like two cent. Uh, a perfect fourth in the in the harmonic series is two cents lower than, than in the in the equal temperament, twelve tone. And the 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 perfect fifth is two cents almost like two cents higher than our equal temperament. So this adds up in two and four four more cent. So when we, what I just want to say, if we, if we have all these different really perfect intervals, um, um, perfect relating to the harmonic series, as I said, which is just a little bit different than the equal temperament of 12 tones, then the result, the resulting major second here is also, um, is also it's it's the same as we we um, we have it in the harmonic series between the eighth and ninth partial, and it's also kind of a like a kind of a perfect uh, major second you can say if you if you play this major second just a bit higher then it's actually sounding a bit nicer but this is like very very I mean we're talking about very little intonation things here, yeah, very minute um, steps, so to speak. Okay, so let me just take a look here, whether I... Um, yeah, that's what I told you already. Yeah, you can also say this, this um, framework one is like an, the um, authentic uh, octave like this um, is 
like you you would say like the authentic cadence is to go from the the, the chord on the fifth degree the dominant to the tonic so you you take a you take that step and if you go from a to e it's called like a plagal cadence so you go from the subdominant to the um, to the um, tonic back and so you you also can can call that um, that that octave like a plagal octave it's just an idea actually i'm in a way i'm 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 um, i'm going with my lessons here a little bit also in a kind of a pace where i'm still like searching and, and learning and 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 i i am um, I'm not really sure now by now where this where where this will exactly lead us here these 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 steps framework one two th three but we will find out in this lesson that this this framework three is is like very valid for and it's really like a like a, a basis of of not only of uh, the Western harmony the Western European uh, culture. Also, other music cultures are, in a way, uh, based. The music of other cultures is based also on that uh, framework. Okay, so now let's talk about the different forces, uh, the gravitational uh, forces, which which are 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 um, are at work here in this framework three. In a way, it's like a. Um, uh, I um, I told you all that that already um, for for framework one and two. So this is actually like just the, the combination of that. So I may repeat myself here, but um, um, yeah, I, I have to do that in this uh, for that lesson actually. It's um, we have these 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 forces. We. We have our root as a, the, the tonal framework, and we, if we just play one note, actually, it's automatically it's it's our root. Because we don't have any other notes, there are no relationships, so nothing will will um, will will give us the the feeling that another note will be actually, actually the resolution or tonal center. If we just have one note, this is the tonal center. And if we add the octave, of course, we just confirmed it. If we add the B, we even confirmed it more. Because we have now we have a relationship. And this relationship we also find in the, the harmonic series between the second and third partial, that interval. And the lower intervals, the lower relationships in the harmonic series, they have a really strong uh, gravitational pull. So like the perfect fifth is the, the first interval uh, which brings a new note. And this really has a very strong pull downwards to uh, to the um, fundamental, to the home base, to the root. So if if I, I have just this interval e, e B, then B doesn't sound resolved. It's la. No, I have to move la la. And when I reach my E. Then I feel okay. Now I reached home. It's home base. This is like the resolution, the resting place. If I go B, I also can go higher even. E, B, e, and I still have the feeling the the top note now. The, the, the E above is is the tonal center. So it has nothing to do with a with a um, how high the note actually is. Although, be careful because when we we have another feeling in our voice and also without singing that this association association 
when we move down with our voice or down with the melody, we have the feeling of release. So in a way, this, this, this feeling of moving down can also um, confuse a little bit the, 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 um, the, the feeling of um, resolution, because the resolution, like the, the, um, the different intervals and um, relationships between notes, they have actually nothing to do with whether you go up or down. You can just listen to them completely separa separate. So this is in the same way as a, as a resolution as this. Many folk songs start like that. And when a folk song starts, starts like that, this is the fifth and this is the root. And you really hear that. This is home base, the E. Oh, one, one interesting uh, other thing. Sorry, I just move a little bit back and forth. Um, on the guitar, um, I, 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 um, I selected actually like E as a root. And for many lessons, for, 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 for a lot of stuff, also on three note structures, also on this, uh, of course, like tonal harmony thing, and also with, with this. Uh, function, subdominant tonic, and so on. I, I, I usually I, I take E as a root because this is a guitar academia, and um, in a way I think the, the key of E, the tonal center of E, is the most um, natural on the guitar. So also E is the only note which is double, where we have two strings. And it's also the outer string, it's also interesting, like this is also kind of a framework, a low E and a high E. And the interesting thing with framework three is that we also, the, 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 um, the, the, um, the neighbor string of the high E is the B. And the neighbor string of the low E is the A. So actually these, these, these four notes here, neglecting the, the, the middle two strings, the G and the D string, we have this framework here, actually. Okay, and playing in these, these keys like E, e minor or E major, um, also it's, it's nice to have, have um, it's, I mean, what, what, what happens quite, quite nicely and naturally is that, that sometimes also these strings also vibrate, they re resonate. Um, and that's also a very nice, nice thing. I'm, I, I like that, that a lot, actually, that, that you have. If you play like... Now oh, I stop the string and you, you hear all these other... Now I stop it. So all these strings are vibrating. That's, that's, that's a very important feature. You find this in Indian music, you find this also. Um, I played with, a, with, a, with, a, um, with an oud player who, who said that it's not, not every um, tonality really works on the, um, on the oud because uh, the use of open strings and th this vibration, this resonance thing also. And I, he, he showed me some like, like different tonalities, different keys, and it was really, uh, yeah, it was really true. I mean, really felt there are some some keys which are really great on the oud and others are a bit hmm not so yeah this atmosphere what is created by resonating strings it's if that is gone it's it's very different um all right so um but i uh, wanted to tell you something different yes um so we talked about Framework one. So the B actually is confirming the E as a root. And this also happens here from B to E, the perfect fourth. So we have a new rule also between the uh, partial, uh, one, two, three, between partial three and four, we find this perfect fourth. And we already find out that this perfect fourth has a tendency um, to resolve to the top node. To, so up, the top note of a perfect fourth is, is, has more gravitational power if you just play this perfect fourth. And so this is also the same relationship and that's very, very true for our um, E and A in our 
called framework three, or this is also framework two, where really the A gets a lot of a lot of um, importance here. And very interestingly, all of these things I just told you about the gravitational forces of these three nodes. This is actually exactly what is implied in the functions. If you have these functions tonic, subdominant, dominant, then in, in, in classical music, and also when you listen to that, it really is, 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 not, is, not about, uh, is not about culture here, actually. That's interesting also. But the functions are explained or characterized in, in Western classical harmony. The E is a resting place. Everything comes there, comes to a conclusion. There is no tension anymore. It's resolution. The A disturbs the tonality. The A wants to be the root. The A, uh, you can also say, the A is, an, um, you go away from the tonality. You go away from, from the root. Yeah, it's a, it's a um, oh, how do you say it in English? Um, Um, so it leads it leads away from the root and also it's preparing the B and that's that's also interesting because that's the smallest step you can take in this tonal framework just from A to B and the B has max, maximum gravitational force, that's a dominant, a dominant note. You also can say it's, it's not only about this function dominant, but it's really, it is a dominant note. It's a very dominant note, which really brings everything what happens before back to the tonic. So this is a real resolution and also called authentic cadence. So it's a regular, the, the strongest, movement actually you can have in, in, in Western harmony. It's like the, the dominant going back home to the E. So the dominant has maximum um, power in a way. So the A is disturbing, leads away, in a way prepares for the B because it's a bit, bit strange to, to go away from, from, from a tonal center, to lead away and then just come back. In a way, so uh, it's in a way it's more logical to go somewhere and then more more uh, organic you, you come back. But this is more like a philosophical thing, maybe it's not so much implied in the in the um, um, harmonic series or, or whatever. But these functions are really really uh, described like that. A leads away, prepares. B, B brings back. So the tonic function is a home base, the subdominant, the A, leads away from the home base, from the tonic, prepares the dominant, the dominant leads back to, to the uh, tonic. And this is like um, the, the classic, classic, complete um, classical cadence. Tonic, subdominant, dominant, tonic. These are the main functions. Everything else is just a substitution of these functions. There are also two possible ways to describe uh, the word subdominant. Sub means under. So you, 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 can, you, can, uh, you, can, you can say it's a note which is under the dominant, which is sub the dominant. So it's a step, a whole step below but you can also say the subdominant is a, is the same distance away the same interval away as a dominant from the tonic but in the opposite direction 
So it's like a subdominant is a perfect fifth down, whereas a, 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 a dominant is a perfect fifth up. And you also have this here in, in notation. Um, so very, there's one, I mean, there are some, some just interesting um, um, like a comparison to, to other cultures here on, on the second page. Um, in Turkish music, makam music, you have the, um, the basic makams or mak mak makwamat, I think. Makami, different, uh, oh, maybe I'm, I'm a bit, uh, I, I forgot how it's, it's pronounced really. But, but anyway, it's um, these basic, basic makams, they use, they, they, they are all constructed by having a tetrachord, so in this case, if we, if we take E as a root to A, and then a pentachord going from A to E, so the, the basic scale of this makam is constructed by putting together a tetrachord plus a pentachord, or a pentachord plus a tetrachord. This is a construction. This is a construction of the basic makams. And the interesting thing, all these makams, they have all a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth in it. And these, these notes all, also always have um, importance. Of course, in every scale, in every makam, basic scale, one one of these two, A or B, the fourth or fifth, gets, gets the most uh, importance. It's a uh, the, the dominant tone, the, the connecting tone of either tetra plus penta or penta plus tetra chord. But it's really interesting. They are really the basic, the basic scales, you can say, and they all use exactly that, that framework three. So it's very prominent also. Uh, it's very uh, valid also in... Turkish classical music, which is very valid also and related to Arabic music. They use, use a kind of almost same, uh, same, same material. Um, also interesting that in Raga music you say you need either a ma or a pa, so either the fourth or fifth must be present, so you can't omit uh, um, both. So you need one. Some rags they actually have a have a ma, only ma and no pa. Um, or they have um, they have no ma but but um, but a pa. So um, or they have both. That's also the most most frequent uh, thing that they have have both. The interesting thing here also is, but this belongs more to framework one. The interesting thing is that pa and sa, of course, they are never altered. They are always right on pitch and they are really tuned to the harmonic series. They're really on it. And there is no augmented fifth or diminished fifth. It's always this framework one if there is a pa. Interestingly, uh, interestingly um, also, if you have rocks with, which are not having the pa or which have ma as, as a prominent uh, note, even musicians in Indian classical music, they say, yeah, right, it has a kind of a tendency that you hear the ma if it's just ma, not tivra ma, so it's just a perfect force, um, there is this tendency of hearing that as sa, as a root, actually. So and that is exactly like framework two, this uh, kind of gravitation um, we, we talked about, that the, if there's a force, 
And if it's very prominent, also in some rocks, you don't have the fifths, but you have the, the perfect fourths. And also the tambura, this drone instrument, is, is tuned like that. So you have the sas and the ma. Um, you think that's a ma, but even Indian musicians, they, 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 um, they also um, say that the ma is really a tendency of sounding like a sa there uh, as a root. Also, of course, it's, it's a, a matter of practice and playing them all the time and, and uh, knowing that's a ma, that's a ma, that's again a ma, then you, 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 you learn to, to, to hear it you learn to hear it uh, differently, more, um, yeah, more. Um, I mean, the thing is when, when, when somebody of, of our culture never heard this kind of music or these kind of uh, scales or raga, ragas, um, we will tend to really hear this, uh, this, this ma, the fourth degree, as a root. It's very strange to hear uh, sa as a root. Sa sounds like the fifth, the root. Actually, the actual root sounds like the, the um, fifths of the scale. And also concerning framework two, this is also, I just maybe I said it already, I don't know. In uh, Carnatic music, this is South Indian classical music of India. Yeah, sure. In th this music, you have a, a Melkarta system, and this is a very like, um, in a way like a scientific all possibilities system so to speak and um, there you have 72 different scales and you have really really weird scales there i mean really scales which which we uh, in in the west uh, would really not consider as 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 nice they're very ex exotic so and 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 you really have to uh, go into that kind of music to to, to know what, what what to do with them but the interesting thing, they go really weird, but the sa and the perfect fifth, the pa, so the root and the fifth, are never touched. They are always there in all these 72 scales. So this is like, uh, also kind of proves this, 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 uh, the, 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 the the power um, that's, that's so strong is this, this perfect fifth. And this is really like a framework. It really holds the whole musical building together. It's a skeleton. And that's, that's what all these frameworks are about. They're really, um, they're really like the pillars of the music. And if you would, when you would just uh, destroy these pillars, the whole building will just fall together. I mean, the whole tonal, uh, the whole tonal building. So maybe other things like sound, like like timbre, like 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 rhythm and all that stuff. It's still there, but the tonal, um, the uh, the tonal basis or the tonal skeleton of of maybe of all tonal music buildings of this, this globe, they're all based either on framework one or two or as here in the in Western harmony, framework three. So it's like a kind of universal thing. And it's, it's, it's no wonder why it's universal because it's like so, so much connected with the harmonic series. And the harmonic series is like a law, like a rule, which exists everywhere on this planet. If you just play a string, you have it. You can't, you have to deal with that. You have, if you want to create a music, you always have to deal with the harmonic series. You will hear if a perfect fifth is out of tune. Everybody will hear that. Or a perfect fourth, or the octave. Or the unison. That's why instruments are tuned like that, mostly. Fourths, fifths, octaves, unison. That's a, that's, these are the intervals instruments are tuned. Okay, I hope I, uh, I um, um, 
you, you could follow this uh, this lesson. I think it's very very interesting to 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 to, to approach music from this kind of a uh, on this kind of a path, um, and suddenly see oh we are we are here and it's all it's all based on that. So it's like a real uh, real law so to speak, and it's not just uh, in our tonic subdominant dominant. Um, uh, functional harmony world. It's like a, it's like everywhere. If you if you know of, of of some like cultures where it's really not like that, please let me know. Put it in the comments below. I'm really interested in in that because I of course I don't know everything. <laughs> far I don't, by far. All right. So that's that's it for that that lesson. I hope it was interesting for you and inspiring to 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 think about those kinds of, of things and to listen to that framework, to play it and listen, uh, re-listen to these, these forces, the gravitational forces would be a great, great um, thing to do. If you like these lessons here on Guitar Academia, please don't forget to subscribe. And also you can support my work here on this, this channel. Just go down in the description below. There is a link um, to my site, um, to my website, and there is a site uh, Academia my guitar academia site and there on the top you have a button where you can donate and this would be really great i would be really thankful okay so that's it thanks for watching my name is hupilden